Hi, so I'm super happy to introduce your content planner to you. First up, we're going to set it up and we just go to setup. Over here, we choose the social media channels that we'll use. So for example, if you use Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, that's fine. But maybe you want to add YouTube here and here it's added. Now it's going to be changed across all the spreadsheets. So for example, if I have January here, it's going to appear here. So here I can choose YouTube now. If I go to February or if I go to March, same thing, I can choose YouTube right here. Now you can use it for different things. So if you don't use content pillars or if you don't care about the topic, what you could do is you could mark your progress. So I'm just going to type in progress and then over here, I'm going to type in stuck and then in progress and let's say done. So now I know where my project is at, or you could type in something like uploaded or something like that. So it just depends on how you organize your content. But the beauty of it is that you can 100% change it to what you personally need. Next, we have the strategy. So here you will type in your main goal. I like to type in, you know, my client's goals. And I also like to type in the budget that they're going to spend on Facebook ads. But that's really your personal choice. Here, the important dates I think they are important because some businesses, you know, they do really well on Black Friday, some do well on Christmas. If you teach a language or something, then you're going to probably do really well in January. So I usually keep this for every business that I work with. And then I know that, for example, on Valentine's Day, they do really well. So I make sure that I create content around it or I create ads around it or whatever it is. You also have content ideas and to do lists. So just to keep all of your content ideas in one place so you don't lose them. Another thing I added is to know who your target audience is, because of course, then you will change the way you talk to them. Maybe you're going to talk to them, you know, in a very smooth way. Maybe you're going to be more official. It really just depends. So it's always good to know who your target audience is. And for me, it always it's always important to know their pain points, their fears, all the negative things they're basically feeling and, you know, their problems so that I could find solutions for them because that kind of content usually works really well for me. Next up, we have the product. So if you're a business, then of course, you're going to want to sell something. And then usually people have some objections, you know, whether it's price, whether it's something else. So then I would, you know, kind of think of the ways I'm going to counter them. So if it's a high price, maybe, you know, I'm going to focus on quality products and things like that in my messaging. But of course, these can be changed to whatever, you know, works for you. Maybe you want something motivational here. Really depends on the client. Next, we have branding. So over here we have the brand aesthetics and it works really easily here. You can just change the color. So to change the color, you will just click here. And then I usually click this plus sign because it shows me the hex code. Then I can just copy that hex code and paste it over here. And here it is. I changed the color like so quickly. And then we also have the logo. So the logo you can either replace by replace image or you can insert image over cells because this is over the page because we want to be able to move it around easily and smoothly. Next, we have fonts. So for fonts, it's even more easy. You can just do it here or add more fonts over here. We have more images over here. This is your mood board. You can add them diff in different ways, uh, either on top of it, or you can add it inside these squares or rectangles, whatever. But and another way you can do it is actually insert drawing. So in drawing, you have more options here and more format abilities. So that could be really nice and really cool. I usually prefer to create this on Canva, actually, and then just add the square rectangle. Now we have the tracker. So this is important because obviously we want to track our followers or we want to track our reach or any other metric that's important for you. So for the date, you just double click and choose the date that you want. And for example, if you want to change it to February, you would just click over here and then I will just drag it to the end. And here we have February. So some of them are March, so I'm going to delete those, but either way, here it is. It's very, very simple. The higher the number, the lighter the color will get. So this is not just, you know, random. This is actually something you can just do like that. And it shows, you know, kind of compares your numbers across the 
born. Now we have the followers here. So the first, you know, it's followers here, top reach. You can change the name of this easily. So I'm just going to type in name so you can see it. And then it appears over here and I have it ready for me. So very easy and really nice. You can choose which columns you prefer and how you want to place them. Now, next up, we're going to have hashtags. This is an important part because this is something I've never seen anyone done before, but it's extremely important. So when you add a hashtag, you also add the number of posts. So you can see that on Instagram. If you go to their search bar very easily, if you can't find it, just shoot me a message. I'm going to show you. And then if you get bored of this hashtag, what you can do is just unclick it and it disappears as you can see from the groups but it will not affect your overall feed. So these are the hashtags, but then they automatically appear over here. So you can see them ready for each post that you have, which is very nice. And the way it works is that you just choose your hashtags here. You can always change them, whichever you want from these 90 options. And what you can do is you can change how they're filtered. So you can filter them by color. So let's say you want the highest hashtags at the top, or you can just sort them like this. And so it's the lowest ones first or by color. I usually use if I want to mix them up. So I will put the medium one at the front and then it gets smaller and bigger. So just more random either way your hashtags so these are the chosen hashtags there are nine groups so 90 of them are ready for you and then these are mixed hashtags so basically these are the same they're just mixed up uh so that you don't use you know the same uh hashtag kind of the same 10 hashtags over and over they're going to be mixed up so instagram will not give you a shadow ban which is important Next, we have the January feed. So over here, all you need to do is insert an image. Once you insert the image, you can really literally just mix it up and change it, the space of it wherever you want. And then it automatically updates in your January feed. So if I go here uh, to the bottom, you see that it's been changed. Let me change the, the ones at the top, at the bottom, sorry, so you can see it better. Let's go because, of course, we start from the bottom. This is your first post you are going to post because that's how your Instagram feed is going to look like. Let me just put these people everywhere and in here as well. And then if I go to January, you will see that they appeared over here immediately. So it's very easy and very quick and just a nice way to go. We also have February. So each month has its own um, feed. And also I've created this visual idea for you. If you want to, you know, create some larger images here and smaller here, or maybe you want to differentiate them by color. So you can find in each month, there's kind of an idea for you that you could go and different feed ideas if you want, of course. And another thing I'm going to say is that you can, for example, let's say I have Instagram and I also have TikTok. So what you can do here is I'm going to duplicate this sheet. So I'm going to say duplicate and then here I'm going to write TikTok and then here I'm just going to choose TikTok instead of Instagram. And also if you just drag it out like this, it just changes everywhere. Then you can just copy this and add it to this one and just add it on all of them very easily so that you don't have to copy and paste you know each one and now the photos are not going to change because they're still extracted from the feed but what's going to change is your caption let's say if you want to change it and and here you can also change these parts as well if you want to so you know you can create this for TikTok, youtube whatever you want it's really a very versatile planner so i'm gonna uh, delete that for now because I don't want to overwhelm you but anyways so this is February you can do the same thing and then we are gonna go to so I also change them with color so it would be easier for, to find and you can change this color by right clicking and clicking change color and just choose the color you like now we have a yearly planner here and then if I choose 2024 
it's going to change the calendar for me automatically so that's really nice because no matter which year it is you can still use this planner and of course if you want to change the date here you can always do that by clicking here and just changing the date to whichever year you want so let's say if it's 2024 i will just click it here and that's it last thing is uh here so you can add your goals your notes and you can also uh, add comments over here. So I would just click here and then insert comments. So I know that, for example, I'm gonna add, um, you know, school year or something. So I plan my content. I usually start from this when I'm planning content because I make sure that all the celebrations, I know about them, but, or I know that, you know, last year for my clients, this week was really going really well. So I'm gonna mark that before I start creating content. Next, I have Instagram engagement. So this is basically a plan for you because it's not enough to create great content. You still need to engage with the audience. So that's why I've created it. And you can just choose which steps you want to follow. So this is basically the main thing you need to know. Now I just want to add a couple of more things in case you want to change the language so for example you can go to file and you can go to settings and if you change the locale locale i don't know how to pronounce this but if you change that and you change the display language everything's going to be updated to your own native language which is of course really nice let me know if you have any questions whatsoever i'm always more than happy to answer them thank you so much for watching and happy planning